I was just thinking that people are going to say, are you trying to tell me that you sat in a courtyard in New Orleans with Tennessee Williams and drank iced tea and coffee? <laughs> and that is what we have, isn't it? Yes, it's precisely what we have, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> it's the first I mean, time I've been on a talk show, Dick, without some sherry, you know? Is it? I always bring sherry. In fact, I've got some here if you want to switch. Well, we'll wh why don't we uh, see if we can make it to the next segment, and then <laughs> I'll be right. glad to have some. In fact, I, I'll be about ready to have some poured over my head if it gets any hotter. It'll improve the show. You think it will? <laughs> yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll see if it does. <laughs> Actually, it's quite comfortable here out of the sun, and I could just... Uh, sit here for the rest of my life without any problem. I, thinking back of that bedroom of yours in that bed, I seem to have a fixation on a big brass bed. I must have always wanted one. You said that you hoped to die in that bed the other night, but you oh, weren't... Oh, yes, it's an ideal bed to die in. How so? Actually, I used to be obsessed and terrified of dying. I'm not at all anymore, but I've always visualized that bed as the best place to die on because I spent uh, 14 years of my happiest nights on that bed, too. <laughs> so it deserves to have your last moment. It deserves to have both, don't you think? I think so, too, yes. <laughs> I deserve that. It's a good philosophy. <laughs> There's a speech at the beginning of Streetcar where Blanche arrives at the house of Stanley Kowalski. I think I can find it here. This is the paperback edition with yeah. Marlon Brando on the cover. Um, and she says, they told me to take a streetcar named Desire and then transfer to one called Cemeteries and ride six blocks and get off at Elysian Fields. I have a feeling that people in Europe, and uh, there goes Brando now on a motorcycle, that yes, people in Europe so. and perhaps in America can't believe that those are actual street names. They're too perfect. Elysian Fields, I've Desire. I they were rather embarrassingly perfect, but actually there, there were precisely those streetcars. What was Desire itself? Was it a street that the streetcar got to here in New Orleans or an area or what was it? It was, it's a section of the city. A section? A section of the city, yeah. yeah. And cemeteries, I suppose, is uh, the necropolis of New Orleans. <laughs> have you visited a cemetery? I have. I, I walked around in one for people, several hours one day and it people, was... People uh, put away in mausoleums above the ground. Yeah which is a rather grisly idea. Uh, personally, I intend to be buried at sea. Do you? Like, uh, okay. It's in my will. Down one of those chutes and out? Sewn up the... in a white sack and dropped overboard. Seriously? Certainly, it's in my will. And that appeals it's to you? It's a it? to my will, yes. Huh? I well, prefer the water. We'll, we can uh, leave the subject of death in a moment, but it's interesting. You said for a long part of your life you feared it, and now you've come to terms with it. What did that for you? Well. When you have uh, lived with uh, a cardiac trouble since the age, well, I had rheumatic fever as a child. Yeah. Uh, when you've lived with it that long uh, and have been told that if you were lucky you would live to be 40, you get kind of used to the idea. And so it ceases to terrify you. It just becomes a familiar part of uh -huh. day by day and night by night life. Every year after 40 has been a bonus then, you feel? Yes, a dividend. It's impossible to talk about this town without mentioning names of your plays. Or some, wasn't Suddenly Last Summer called Garden District once or yes, something like that? Yes, uh, Suddenly yeah. Last Summer was the major of the two plays, both of which were laid in the Garden District, yeah. which is on the other side of, say, of Canal Street. Tennessee, what are your favorite haunts here when you come back to New Orleans? Where do you head for? When I lived here on St. Peter's Street, there used to be a bar called Victor's. And immediately after I finished work, I would go around the corner to Victor's and I would have uh, something made with brandy and cream. And Alexander, Brandy Alexander. Oh, well, those are good. And I would listen to the Ink Spots singing a particular record if I didn't care. Would you like me to sing it? I would like you to. Can you do it a cappella? No. Oh. It's for a very high voice. <laughs> Can I hum it? Uh... <laughs> If I didn't, no, can you? If I, I can, didn't care, I don't know, I can't get, <clears throat> I don't know, I don't remember the melody. The uh, vocalist, the male, the I lead the vocalist had a very, very high voice, you remember? If I didn't care. Yeah, sort of and up in there like that. a bass would talk along with it, you know? Saying holy mackerel or and something. And I would like. drink that Brandy Alexander and listen to that, and that yes. was the high point of my day. That I sounds good. I didn't much in those days. <laughs> Are you superstitious like most Southerners? 
very, very superstitious. I believe yeah. in astrology, tarot cards. Uh, I won't walk under a ladder, the whole bit. Also very religious. I think that goes with it, too, don't you? Any particular religion? Well, I've been... Uh, I was uh, baptized Episcopalian, and my brother, while I was uh, non compass mentis, uh, he had me converted to Roman Catholicism, but I didn't notice the difference. You didn't notice the difference? No. Well, um, why did he have to do that while you were non compass Well, medicine? he thought what? I was dying. I think I was always falling down. Uh, it was because I was taking speed and all that. Well, I'd been through all that yeah. before. But he, he was mis, uh, he miscalculated. <laughs> are you at this moment? Are you at this moment a Roman Catholic? Someone else miscalculated every time. No, because I, I don't see how I could be because I uh, I don't believe any of the thing any of the tenets of the Roman oh, Catholic see. faith. But I I wondered if you're superstitious in the sense that a lot of Southerners are who believe in ghosts. This town is filled with uh, ghosts, supposedly haunted houses and all of that. Any experiences with that? Actually, no. I've been in a house that was in England that's supposed to be haunted by a great lady. And I looked all around one night, but I couldn't see a sign of her. There was just a great deal of fog, which is probably the, what they mistook for the great lady. There's a place here called the Haunted House in the quarter. And there's that elaborate legend about how 100 years ago or so it caught fire. And when the people went in to put out the fire, they found that the lady of the house, is it Madame LaLaurie, was keeping slaves inside and torturing them, and they found them chained and in various stages of decomposition and no, torture and decay. Mm. And she was uh, driven out of town, really, or she escaped, leapt with the, her husband into a carriage, and I guess they headed down the river road and got to Paris and maybe alive and well in Argentina by now. This was a long time, the Madame LaLaurie, I'd never Story. heard of it, actually. <laughs> Gee, if you keep hanging out with me, you'll learn a lot about <laughs> your own, na floor, own yeah. neighborhood. Mm. You not know the Napoleon House? Napoleon House I've heard of. Uh, now, what street is that on? Actually, I've never been in it. I can tell you where the Napoleon is without knowing the street numbers, but it's an ancient house that was... Uh, the legend is that when they were going to snatch Napoleon from exile, oh, I there was a that. plot to get him over here, uh, and it was even a... A famous pirate. Um, Lafitte? No, it was, it was another one. Uh, I can't think of his name. His last name was Three Letters. His uh, last uh, name was Three Letters? Yeah. What's the name of the pirate? He was going Q or Rue or something like that. Anyway, they were going to try to get Napoleon, bring him here, and the mayor offered him this house. That's why they call it the Napoleon House. Uh -huh. And there's even a cult of people who believe that the body of Napoleon was not buried where they think it is, that a dummy was buried, that he was brought here, and that he was buried somewhere in Louisiana. Did you know that? I'd never heard that particular legend, no. We people from Nebraska always know these things. <laughs> uh, and uh, it's a great place to sit of an afternoon. It, uh, if you knew where it was, I'd go and sit there. <laughs> we, we have to take a pause. We'll be right back.